it's at we're going to get working on it but first we're going to give it a bath so i'll figure I'd do a little walk around of what it looks like before uh versus afterward and uh no don't know when the last time it was actually washed but the roof up there you can kind of see has uh moss mildew and just dirt junk all on it but give it a quick little walk around for our documentation process got it growing on the hood too got some nice little good things there All right, we'll get started on it. I gotta find something a little bit more aggressive than that hand cloth to get that off of there. Well, since it's hard to see probably from the ground level, here's what we're up against. So this is what the roof looks like uh, when uh, we purchased the bus. Now here's what our first wash is looking like. So it's a little bit of an improvement, getting back to white instead of this charcoal gray color. But just wanted to show you the uh, contrast here in color before we continue to move on. looks like. washing the bus but it looks good so after a few hours of washing it is clean it's not perfect but at least it has most of that moss off of it which will make things a little bit nicer to be working around when we start tearing into it another good thing is I sprayed all the windows and none of them leak I don't plan on ripping them out and putting in RV windows I'm just going to use the ones that are here some people have their opinions one way or another, but it's going to work for what we need it for. So now it's school bus yellow with a nice white roof on it again. We're good to go. Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, it's about that time I get started on this schoolie. So I figured I'd give you a little uh, walk around on this bus, show you what we've got and um, what some of our plans might be. But uh, as you can see, it's moved from a different spot. The other day we moved it over here to give it a good washing uh, so we weren't dealing with all the deer moss and everything else that was growing on it. So now it's at least nice and uh, clean. So when we start doing some work on it, we're not getting covered in uh, just nastiness and dirt, but um, just a general, uh, I guess some general information on it is it's a 2006 International CE 300. Uh, with the DT-466 engine in it with the Allison transmission. Uh, it's got about 125,000 miles on it, um, which means it's got a lot of life left in that motor. Uh, problems that we know about are there's a turbo actuator that is uh, 
is an issue that needs to be replaced on it so it does run and drive it's just that the turbo doesn't kick in um, so it's kind of a dog trying to drive up hills and things like that but uh, for what we need it for here it's great uh, also needs uh, some tires on it uh, too they're uh, outdated uh, for the school use uh, which is some of the reasons why they ended up uh, auctioning it off and, and we ended up with it but just give a little walk around here um, and uh, show you what we got but as you can see it's a fairly large school bus it's a 66 passenger and uh, it's gonna have plenty of room for what we need it for it's got some storage boxes down here which um, to find them with uh, storage boxes already installed is a huge bonus came with a cat i guess uh, i got another box right here that we'll use for something it's just uh you know extra reinforced boxes that are hanging from underneath and your typical emergency door here in the back opens up figure out what we're going to do if it's still going to be usable functional i know some people turn them into what they call garages that you know go under under the bed or whatever back here ours is going to be set up a little bit differently um, and i'll explain that a little bit more here in a little bit but uh, i got two more boxes over here and also it's kind of nice as it has the side door on it as well so we're thinking we might do something uh, with that just to make a little deck or something off of it but uh, we'll see what we find uh, most useful once we get to that point and then just all your normal compartments for battery and electronics everything up here but uh take you on a walk inside here real quick scooter's helping me this morning but it is it's a diesel engine like i said the dt 466 it does have air brakes and it's also got um air actuator for the doors to open and close which is kind of cool unfortunately we're not going to be able to use that um, as our function for the rental just because I won't be having an air compressor on the engine running. So uh, I'll figure something out, out with that. But uh, and we're gonna try to keep the cockpit pretty much intact as you would see here on the bus. Like I said, our theme is to um, give people an experience of staying in something that they definitely know what it used to be. Uh, we are going to paint the exterior of the bus from yellow to some other different color, uh, which we're working on figuring that out right now. But um, everything else up here pretty much will stay the same as what it is. Uh, and that way uh, just gives that, that cool effect of being the school bus. And this is what it looks like uh, looking back. We still have everything still in here. We have not done any work to it yet um, other than just cleaning it up and moving it around. I mean, so much so is... Uh, we still even got garbage on the floors in here and of course you always find pencils and everything from from the students when they were still using this because it was still a usable bus um up until uh i don't know probably right before we actually bought it so <laughs> i don't know how many months that's been that we've had it but um you know they were still using it as a backup bus if they needed it but uh, this is that side entrance or side exit emergency exit and then all the way to the back but we're gonna be working on developing it so uh the plan is to try to get this to be at least a i don't know like somewhere around maybe a four or five or six person sleeping configuration in here um so we're talking about doing you know a regular bed back here um like a lot of people do in their schoolies and then somewhere in this general area maybe a couple of bunks and then up there Possibly doing like a couch or a futon or something that folds down flat just to give some extra sleeping But we're not doing a roof raise on the bus and when I mean a roof raise a lot of people will cut the They'll pull all the windows out And then they'll cut just below the window line and then they'll raise it up another I don't know 12 to 20 inches or something like that just to give you a little bit more a little bit more height uh, this way our bus, fortunately, is one of the tallest ones already, so it's got a six foot six ceiling in it, and we're just gonna leave it alone. We're even gonna use, keep the original windows in here. And I know a lot of people have, that do schoolies that are gonna be living in them full time, um, replace those, they pull them out and they put regular RV windows into them. Uh, but for our application, and since it's not really gonna be anywhere or go anywhere, at least you know, right now, uh, we know what the climate's gonna be. 
and it'll work good for our application especially since the name of the game on this one is going to be kind of like a budget build bus uh, for us we're going to try to utilize as much as we already have here on the property uh, between stuff that we brought down in our shipping container and then um, as far as uh, building it out we're going to try to use a bunch of the wood that we're milling here on the property too that's uh, that's dried out so that way uh, we can finish out the the interior with that now i will have to purchase um, you know some of the subflooring stuff insulation uh, the heating and cooling components things like that but that's all stuff we want to have new anyway so that it's comfortable for uh, for our, our guests to stay in in here but uh, we're gonna even try to keep the the ceilings uh, pulling them out obviously because I want to insulate up above it but uh, it just kind of has that cool steel look to it um, the original metal and uh, we'll see how it goes if it pulls down and then they're kind of twisted and tweaked might end up getting rid of those but uh, like I said the name of the game is try to do this on a budget but yet still want to make sure that uh, it's going to be insulated well above it. So pretty much everything on this interior will be gutted out of here and including the floor. Uh, we got to pull this, all this stuff up, pull all the seats out, uh, get down to the metal pan that's underneath the subfloor here. Um, see what kind of condition is it, it is in, if there's any rust, get that uh, treated so that it doesn't uh, continue to spread or weaken and then start building it up from there but it should be a fun a fun project for us and uh, just wanted to give a quick little walk around on what our bus consists of and um, you know kind of what our plans are and where we want to get going on it so just wanted to show it to you and we're going to go ahead and get started on it and we'll keep you you know informed of our progress on that so thanks a lot everybody all right first thing i want to try to do is get these seats uh, pulled out of here uh, to give us access to the subfloor and start tearing that up then too but um, we're going to try to do this somewhat carefully because we might end up using some of the seats uh, in the bus uh, it's just an idea we'll see what happens but let's get started also told we're supposed to have a solar eclipse later today so we'll see if we can uh, check that out too maybe we can include that into the video <clears throat> this knee cushion out of here um, just wanted to try things out before I had it filming but now I guess I'll work my way up the rows getting the seats out try using the sawzall to cut the bolts off because the underside you can't get to the nuts uh, very easily so I might end up pulling the grinder out later on but I don't feel like having all that fine metal dust flying around in here right now so I'll just try this until I get tired of it seat down 21 to go Well, as 
much as I didn't want to listen to a cutoff wheel, I guess it makes the most sense. Give it a try. Well, all the seats have been removed. I've got a bunch of cleanup I have to do. And then I'll start tearing up the subfloor. But this is what our mobile dance floor looks like now, I guess. So we'll uh, just keep moving, roll, rolling right along. Well, it's another new day. Gonna get started here on the bus again. Just figured I would show you what, what uh, I got done yesterday. A few things that I started working on in the evening time that I uh, didn't really film, but uh, it would have been pretty boring doing that part of it. So I figure I'll show you what I have going on and uh, then we'll do some more filming as we go. So uh, as I walk in, you can see I've got the driver's seat removed and the heater panel removed out of here. Um, the plan is, well, as you, I'll show you here real quick too. So I removed all the edging and all the trim up the middle, which I think I filmed that removal. Uh, but these are these green slash blue hoses are all filled with coolant uh, from the engine, which go to these heater boxes here and here. Those I want to remove so that there's well, there's really no use for them because the engine is not going to be running to heat the bus anyway. Um, but I also want to remove the uh, heating coil for the driver and all of the heating lines that go up into the engine bay. So that way this whole area will basically be blank and not have all those uh, those heating elements uh, in it anymore. There's really no reason for it. And uh, I don't wanna have any risk of a coolant leak inside of the bus uh, once it's uh, being used as a rental. And uh, if we need heat in here, uh, if we do get it mobile, then we're talking about putting a uh, split system like a mini split with the head unit up here anyway and then it would just be uh, sized to be able to run off of a inverter or a converter and then that way we could operate it while in motion or whatever just thoughts that we have so anyway the plan is to get this all completely gutted right here and then you can see i've got the electrical panel lifted up here too i'm going to start going through and removing some of the uh, wiring for the switches that are no longer used. I'll leave the switches in there just because uh, that will be kind of fun for kids or whatever to just kind of mess with once it is a, a rental unit. Um, but I'm gonna remove the wiring for things that aren't used anymore, uh, like the strobe lights and the uh, uh, flashers and cross gates and all of that. Um, no point in having those wires there that could potentially short out and pop a fuse or whatever, but uh, the plan is anyway to make it so that the bus will be completely disconnected from its electrical system once it is a rental, uh, meaning I'll have the batteries disconnected so there won't be any real chance of that happening. And then the bus will be operating as like kind of like an RV. It'll have its own 12 volt uh, battery system for the lighting as well as a 120 volt system for uh, outlets or uh, other things that we might put in here. But like I said, it's a, this is gonna be a bus budget build and anything that we have already here, we're gonna put into it. Obviously gonna do it uh, you know, the right way that, uh, that we see fit, but um, we're just gonna have to do it within a, a certain you know, 
certain parameters. So anyway, just wanted to show you what we got going on here today. So uh, we'll uh, turn the camera around and get going on doing some of this uh, this work today. So I'm tearing the dash apart right now, um, but I will plan on putting it back. I'm just getting rid of all the old CB radio wiring that runs up through there. But uh, since this is all going to go back in here, uh, as I pull off the screws, then I need to label them, put them in a plastic bag. Uh, one of the most important things to do, especially if you're doing uh, any type of car or whatever restoration, you pull the screws out, you don't know if you're going to use them again, label that bag so that you know exactly where they came from in case you have to reuse them. And in this case, I will be reusing them. So uh, keep things organized, makes life a lot easier when you're putting things back together. So uh, we'll get started on doing that. Another day here, a little bit chillier out this morning, so uh, bundled up and just gonna keep on working, doing some stuff. So uh, made some progress yesterday with getting uh, some of the electrical stuff uh, tore out, I guess, and eliminated. Um, don't need to have all of the uh, lighting circuits and everything anymore here on the bus, so still working on getting the dash part of it cleaned up, but here's kind of where I'm at for this morning starting out. I uh, pretty much have all the wiring in this area uh, eliminated off of the switch panel and uh, there's a couple of things that are still going to be functional for the bus to be operational like the electric mirror adjustments as well as the heating on the mirrors I keep those in operation but uh, disconnected the pneumatic uh, switch for the door to open and all the other lighting for uh, flashers and heating uh, midship heater heaters and the rear heaters that are back over in this area since they're no longer going to be functioning and they're going to work on getting uh, the plenum here taken out since I'm going to be removing this heater here which feeds the plenum there's no point in keeping that and then we could potentially use that space for something else or building it up but that's kind of what my plan is for today is just to keep cleaning things up and uh, eliminating devices and circuits and whatever that uh, are not going to be functional for the bus operation anymore uh, before I start tearing into uh, the ceiling areas, um, still have it all up. I got to get all that tore down, but and get the floors tore up. I did peel up a little piece of it back here uh, this morning just to see what we've got. I'll just give you a little preview. Basically, it looks like it's glued directly down to the floor, which looks about what would be expected uh, from some of the other bus builds or schoolie builds that I've seen where the floor is uh, kind of rusty. Now it is appears to be a galvanized flooring that they have in here so I'll have to wire wheel that to clean it up and then put some kind of a rust coating uh, over that just to prevent it from uh, spreading or whatever else but I'll work on tearing that up here probably in the next day or so uh, but just working on doing some of the, the front tear out here because I still have to get uh, all of these lines eliminated which are those are the uh the bus coolant lines meaning uh, antifreeze and i'll probably let the sun come up a little bit here this morning before i tear into those and drain them out and, and pull them out but i will certainly get the camera on that and uh film it as i'm doing that but uh, get the get it set up and keep on videoing <music> pretty painless other than like anything with an older school bus you're gonna find all kinds of little treasures and goop and whatever else so a uh, nice thing is is that I'm able to see that we've got the windshield wiper motor that was up underneath that plenum um, that's really about it to have to take into consideration for building this out now I've got this heater 
assembly loose um, as well as this core down here and everything else is loose but can't really do much until I get the coolant system drain so what I'm gonna have to do is fortunately on these buses they put isolation valves here so I will be able just to turn these off I'll have to move some things around but turn these off and then that way I can disconnect these couple of hoses here which run up over the top of the engine over to this valve over here and that's what feeds inside on the driver's side of the bus but I'll close these valves and then I'll have to loop one of the probably the shorter hose uh, a nice not a sharp loop but a gradual one keeping in mind to stay away from the turbo um, because this does appear to go through the water pump down here and then feed into probably the intercooler and some other things for cooling the turbo uh, so I can't just shut these off and leave them shut I will have to circle these back around loop them back around and reconnect them up that way everything on the cab side of the bus will be basically uh, ready to break free and not have to worry about having uh, antifreeze leaking out so I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have to just do that now so I can continue on demoing the inside all right got my flexible rubber tote up underneath there to be able to try to catch the uh, coolant as it leaks out so let's get started all right caught most of it a little bit got onto the frame but we'll wash that down but most of it ended up in the bucket which isn't a lot but now i'll just let uh these ones stay open for right now and i'll go inside and slowly lift those other hoses up so that hopefully it'll start to drain down and then into the bucket well we'll see what we can do well, what I was hoping to be able to just lift those up, I realized that under the dash here, I've got about an 18 inch rise on the lines. So what I will do now is I will just take that last one out the side door and get my bucket down there and try to capture it all as I uh, disconnect it off of that one heater. Eh, you live and learn, right? So I would call that successful. Had a little loss on it, but overall, ended up getting about, I don't know, three gallons or so out of it. And the nice thing is, let me show you inside, didn't make a mess inside either. Well, for the most part. Looks like we caught a little bit more down here. But really the only loss that we had in here is just where the spread towel is at. But I still have to pull those out through the firewall but otherwise they ran all along all along this edge here and didn't have any spillage in here for the most part pretty happy with that now i'll get back out front here finish putting that back together and then our cooling system or heating system will be fully disconnected all right got the Lines disconnected from here that ran up over the top of the engine and then down underneath the air box there. I guess it's the air filter. Have it disconnected off of the heater core that ran to the inside here and pulled that whole assembly out. So there's where it came through right there. And as you can see, a lot of pencils. So if anybody needs any pencils, it could probably help you out. Uh, but that area is now opened up. And then also looped, put in just a kind of a patch piece that loops around right here next to the frame, back around. And that's just a temporary thing, uh, just to be able to move the bus around the property. Uh, if we were to get it out on the road or when that day comes, then what I'll do is drain the whole, the whole engine cooling system and then off of the bottom of the water pump right here, I will disconnect this hose and then run it up to the connection back over here that way it's just a short you know just a short straight run versus this loop where it could potentially uh, pinch off 
uh, under stress or flop itself against the turbo right here, which would melt through it. And then I would have a coolant leak, so that would not be good. But uh, this will work great for right now, uh, for moving it here on the property. And uh, now I just need to clean up all my little pieces of hoses and hose clamps and then get my coolant all collected up and have that as a uh, reserve in case I need to top off the system. But it looks like it's pretty good shape right now. So we'll just get moving on cleanup. Mm -hmm. 